13. Folks, welcome <laughs> to the Jake Feinberg Show here in Santa Monica, California. Just finished up a wonderful brunch at Patrick's Roadhouse with a fantastic rhythmist, master rhythmist, and beautiful human being. Arjun Brugman, welcome back to the Jake Feinberg Show. Thank you. It's so great to be here and it's so great to hang with you. It's an honor. Yeah. Um, can you talk about, I mean, as best you can, uh, the, the brief Tao ceremony that you do in these uh, in these journeys that you're that you've been doing in these studio yoga studios and yeah. a little bit about like the intention for doing it to start. Yeah. Um, well, the, the the practice that I lead, the little meditation that I lead um, before the journey, is uh, a very simple practice and one of the first practices in the lineage that I learned in called the inner smile mm. and they say it's the um, the first practice you learn and the last practice you learn or that happens so the first practice is to take basically your senses and the energy that we usually have up here and even Tibetan Buddhism it's called lung disease and lung is pretty pretty much means chi or prana so it's all that energy that's here and thinking and, you know, the tightness. And it's just to take that and to bring it, you know, the third eye down. And it's called the smile. So you're kind of smiling. And that smile energy is not like positive nor negative. It's just peace. And bringing that down the face and then going into each organ and smiling to each organ. So in Taoism, what they say is that... Um, the anatomy of your personality comes from the organs. So each organ has its own spirit. Mm. So that makes up your ego. So it's kind of getting in touch with each organ spirit and each organ which the emotions come from. And balancing them out. So the heart, uh, the lungs, going to the liver, the spleen and pancreas, the kidneys, and finally resting at the navel. So then you're getting in touch and you're clearing and pretty much almost dissolving any kind of negative trapped energy. I wake up every morning like that. I mean, what you just described is just this, this hemisphere of, of constriction. Yeah. People find, or at least the feedback you get is that it's, it's, a, it's a clearing mechanism before the journey itself. People find yeah. it, it is effective. It is, yeah, because, you know, I think... You know, it's, it's, not to compare anything, but mm. I think sometimes in yoga, especially Western, there's this idea of 
just the fire channel the spine and to leave right right Taoism is like once the smile opens here and this is called the mysterious mother the gateway the to sea the of chi or something exactly, right yeah. yeah so you know it's different than the chakra system even though it's connected so there's the the center and brain of intellect the center and brain of uh, compassion and then the center and the brain of the intuition so when this opens up, so that's to say it's the first practice because you're smiling down, and the final practice from the smile from deep within, the source of Tao, of everything, unmanifested awareness, then smiles out, and that's what can't be said. And that's the dissolving, and that's, you know, so then to take that and to do the microcosmic orbit, so then you're bringing that energy up the spine, connecting to the cosmos, but you're not leaving. You respect <laughs> life, and you're coming back down oh, man. the water channel, the yin channel, which most of uh, Western civilization ignores. So then feed the body and then come back, connect to the earth. So I just wanted to, it's so, I, I feel so connected to Arjun, not because I've known him for a long time, but because we're both Taoists and I just, looking back on hindsight, when you started to cultivate the Tao, I think you talked about having a lot of physical pain or there was just certain reasons why you sought out your teacher or where you found your teacher. But how did, when you started to cultivate, how did, how did it uh, free you up as far as becoming more yourself on the drum kit? Oh, um, or well, were yeah. you able to find, use that method in some ways to, if you were on, in a, on a gig, could it be punk metal, metal rock, whatever, but, to, to do exactly what it's meant to do. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, along with this practice, there's a lot of other practices of Qigong. That's right. Simple movements, such as standing meditation. Tai Chi. So yeah. The channels are opened up in the arms and the legs and in the body. So then you're pretty much connected to that space or, you know, the essence of silence, right? So that's mm. where, where music, right? That's the thing is to, to play from there. So then no matter what I was playing, no matter what kind of music, you know, if you just drop and let go and you're, you're from that space, then everything becomes open and spontaneous. Yes. So it's almost like, and also with gratitude and also devotion. So whatever that is that, that, you, that we don't know, the mystery of why we're here and what everything is and the gift of music, the gift of this body and to be able to play music, is to kind of almost like thank you for that and to play for that. That's right. Whatever form or non-form you want to give it. And so we're all part of that conversation and listening in that space and silence and respecting that and playing from that, that place. Yeah. So even punk music, it's just like open and just, yeah. You know? Because you're channeling a completely selfless sort of a, almost a unity kind of yeah. concept, you know? Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, how do you incorporate the DAO? How do you incorporate it on a day to day basis? I know for me, like, um, sometimes I'll go to the Holy House to pray when I'm in Tucson. I don't go enough. I feel a very direct connection to Laomo. Sometimes I'll do Tai Chi. Um, but more importantly, I just try to lead in my life with the Tao. I mean, yeah. I, 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 that, in, in whatever that is, and maybe that's just blissful joy, bringing joy to people, making people happy. It's hard to do in this time. It's hard, but you have to be happy yourself. Yeah. You know? And so, can you just talk a little bit about, like, how you are, in this time, keeping your soul together and happy in order to project that out, that, that light out, because you have that aura to other people. Yeah, well, especially these days where um, the uncertainty of how we are living and what could be a future or non-future, <laughs> um, especially in, in the arts, you know. Um, right. So it's like, why am I doing this? And, you know, so the practice, I think, really just connects you, like we're, you know, like I was saying, to that place, to where the brain, acti the mind activity of excess thinking and identity um, is a lesson. So then you're really just more here, present in the moment, and um, with music or whatever you're doing. And that naturally that will then connect to 
two others. Like the, the you know the Buddhist um, you know concept of like in the ground of being and the awareness that we're all in, everything is connected. Right. So every practice that you do, whether your intention is to help the whole universe or not, automatically it is helping. Mm. Because right. if, if I can be at peace, then that just gives a little more peace than everything, you know? Um, of course, then that could become an identity and ego, and I'm giving peace to everyone, and that, of course, closes it up again. So I think the practice is to always just drop you know, and that's right. Into that. That's right. And um, like a consistent state of let it go. Let right. It go. It's con I'm, I'm constantly more than ever before just like checking myself and be like, no, that's your ego now. Yeah. You have to just that that emptiness, that, that void of and, and and that stillness. I mean, did you did you first experience sort of um, that in New Jersey in terms of when you started to cultivate the Tao you've also gone to India quite a bit yeah and I just yeah. wonder about like when you fell into sort of a place where there was no distraction not a lot of material stuff around and maybe it wasn't the place didn't smell that great it wasn't necessarily aesthetically that pleasing but but you were completely empty and it was the most peaceful thing in the world yeah, I, yeah well, I've been blessed to have that a few times in my life to that point where you're saying. And it was usually Did that happen in, in Jersey? Did it happen in India? Jersey like, first. Yeah, Jersey first. Yeah, Can yeah. you talk about the, the, your memory in Jersey? Um, Just because I don't think people need to take, always have to take the pilgrimage to the East, even no, though. Yeah, you know. I mean, you know, I think when I was young, you know, after I experienced it, I, when I was young, yeah. I, I, I remembered, wow, like I used to basically meditate when I was like four. And you, yeah. you didn't know what, it, what you I were doing. I didn't know yeah. what it was, but the concepts of um, where did I come from, what is, what's going to happen after, what is death, what, is, what does the word nothing mean? I was really stuck on the word nothing. But, and I would sit there and try to experience nothing, <laughs> which was hilarious. Um, but no, I think when I first started the Dallas practices and um, working with my teacher, Ron, that it, yeah, it came from him. You know, he was able to be a channel and be open um, to give that transmission to mm. someone else. Not give, but just be able to have someone vibrate or not, whatever on that, that level. He so, was a yeah. channel or a vessel yeah. or yeah, that kind of thing. So, I mean, I had an experience with him once where we were just sitting and opening. And, and then all of a sudden it was... Uh, there was no, it's like, you know, like, you know, the cliche, like they say, there's no form, there's no inside, there's no outside, there's no up, there's no down. There was absolutely nothing but the purest light that I've ever seen, but I wasn't seeing it with my eyes, and it wasn't coming from anywhere, and there was no center to it, and there was no nothing, there was just, and I was sitting in a chair when I was meditating, and uh, when I came to after that, I was lying on the ground crying in an empty room. That happened to me with not the same thing, but with Tsiji. Ah. He woke me up one morning I, in his house, and he said, if, if you can get out of your coma, please come into this room. And it was the same thing. He was, tell, I don't know if Ron was talking to you, but I mean, he, Tsiji was talking to me, and it was like just all, it wasn't, there was nothing really comprehending. It was pure light. And then I wound up going back to bed <laughs> for a little while, but then, I don't know, there was, it was somewhat cathartic. I mean, I, to me, I don't know how you feel but to the, for some reason, with, you can explain in your own words, but in the Tao, for me, there's this endless well of inspiration. Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, even in my, I get exhausted and tired when I can't create, and I can feel it sort of, you know, really sinking in. But man, when I'm out kind of reflecting that light on other people, doing this kind of stuff, and, you know, doing my true nature, um, the inspiration just seems to grow and grow and grow. It has nothing, there's no material component to it. Yeah. It's pure love. Now, I remember you tell me one time, you're like, I just, you came to my mind and I thought about love supreme, you know? Oh, and, yeah. and that's kind of, I just wanted you to talk in your own way about what kind of well, what keeps your soul together? <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, clearly we just saw you on the balaphone, the, I mean, very amazing rhythm patterns. Once you really get cooking, I mean, it's obvious that you're steeped in it. Um. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, playing, for me, definitely playing music 
does that, and I have to remind myself of that. Also. Yeah. Um, because it's, yeah, there's, you, know, I, you know, there's a lot of difficulties going on, and, you know, there's a, you know, I'm always dealing with some kind of thing, and the practice is always there. But playing music, um, and then getting into that space to where, you know, the mind also stops thinking. Right. Is this... Is Timeless. This, yeah. Is this is this right? Are you in time? Are people going to like this? That note was completely off because there's a lot of weird notes in this. Then all of a sudden something happens. It's just like, oh, dude, oh. it starts to fly oh. away, dude. And it's just like, um, <laughs> you know who Alex Gray is? Okay, so I was playing at Alex Gray's wow. once, and he was yeah. sitting behind me. I was playing the tone drum, and um, then afterwards he was just like, ah. How did it feel? You know, the spirit giving it to you like that. And I was just like, <laughs> Yes, dude. Like, I exactly. love that That's stuff, it dude. Like. It's because mm. it's the same thing, like, you know, it's like I've had a lot of with the experience I explained before, you know. It was always usually with the being, with, with like, you know, City Ma in India or, or praying or, you know, it, it's grace. It's also coming. It's so it's graceful, not like man. I'm doing it. It's something that so it's the same thing with playing, and all of a sudden it's just like this, and then it's there. You know, if it's correct, if it's in key, if it's I have no idea. But at that point, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. If you're in a group of like that, that to me, can you talk about an experience you had where um, it's just slightly different, but just the idea of maybe you did hit a clam or a wrong note. But the band or the rhythm group or the collective, just like a flock of geese, they just went off in that direction. To me, that's where the that's where the magic occurs. Yeah. You know, where no one's like, "Oh, you screwed up." It's, "Oh, we're all going to go there together." Yeah. You talk about a time in, in your career like that. Even in in India, did you have a chance to play with some percussionists at all? Or? Um, not really. It was nothing much outside of. I, I dig. I dig. I dig. I mean, I, and early on, before all that, when I was still on sure. drum kit, yeah, yeah, know, were a bunch of like you know nineteen, twenty year olds, riff raff, first getting yeah. into <laughs> bitches brew and like all that, <laughs> and then just going as out as we possibly could. Oh man, that was great. But you know, recently, I mean, I, I'm I'm looking for that. Experience. I love that you're bringing this out. Yeah. T tendency is to articulate it, get it into the ether. Yeah. What are, now, do you necessarily have to be in, in this new paradigm? Are you okay with being with cats that might look at you like you have three faces when, with the stuff we've been talking about, like where you could actually be oh, yeah. a mentor? Yeah. Like that, is that something that, that you're totally willing to take on, if um, it feels right? If, if it feels right, and I think, you know, I'm, I'm still young compared to a lot of my friends, and you don't see age as that much no. of a thing. It's just the body, but it also is experience and a certain level of wisdom that comes. What I'm starting to see with some of the places that I'm playing is that, yeah, I'm playing to 20-something-year-olds, and, and, and it's like, and part of me, in the spirit, it's like, I'm there with them. But then they're looking at me and treating me a certain way, and I'm like, oh, I am 45. I do have gray hair. I oh yeah, that's right. Damn, it's like I'm, I might be stepping into that well soon, and it's a little weird. Well, or you know? just the idea that, well, I guess the question is, what do you consider to be, if you ever have that opportunity, what is what would be important mentoring? What is the most important thing for being a good mentor, especially for kids that are. We're, I mean, my daughter, my older daughter is brilliant, and yet she's in this time, at 16, totally, you know, there's just so much stress. Yeah. A lot of younger cats that, we're, we're living in almost like, it's like one big civilization, almost yeah. a non-culture. Yeah, and here yeah. you are coming from this period of spiritual culture, musical cultures. Um, if you get a, a bunch of cats with raw talent, you know, and they're hungry, Where's that fine line between good mentoring and bad mentoring? Well, not that you, not, I mean, yeah. in, in, in your own experience. My own experience, I think, you know, if you're going to be, step into that kind of role, no, being that I've had mentors like that and, and my, yes. myself, is to first build or have some kind of common ground that you meet at. To it's like, hey, we're in this together. I'm not better than you, you know, but there's no comp, this is, 
we're, we're in this life together experiencing it. But this is what we're working with and let's, you know, go from there. So definitely to have this feeling of um, trust and that... Um, relatability, relatability, compatibility. Even, even yeah. if there's a big age difference, it's still like... Yeah. That, that doesn't, you can still get that. Yeah, and you know, and, and to, to, you know, not, not manipulate or not, you know, do any kind of negative thing like that, but just pretty much share this thing. And, and I don't know, I mean, it's, it's hard for me to see myself as a mentor because I also am learning. I know, but when I started I to bring this up, yeah. the sun came out. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's, it, you know, all I'm saying is that mentoring, it's, it, it sounds like a lot of gravitas and responsibility, yeah. but it's just kind of like, you're a little bit farther down the path based on experience yeah. and you just want to shepherd help people move down that path in yeah. their own way yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Be before i let you go um i just wanted you to talk about um uh this this jam you had with the, the legendary john densmore yeah. um he lives here in santa monica um he's the kind of guy who's been in that timeless zone from a very early age watching art blakey playing all types of music being open but you know we are all, we all do get older. He is in, in um, you know, kind of, um, uh, whatever. He, I, I just wanted you to talk about how special that communication you have is when you guys can jam, you know? Yeah. You know? Because yeah. he, I, I mean, Johnny to me is like, he was the first, I just couldn't believe how down to earth he was yeah. when I first, I, and I didn't, I've not met him personally, but when I've interviewed him, and he talked about Ray and Robbie and how, when the gold ring it got so tight they couldn't let go they got real caught up in the money and and i and and john has always tried to keep both feet on the ground oh yeah so i just wanted you to talk about your relationship with him absolutely yeah i mean you know it's the, the love is there and the love you know it's a connection through music and also spirit um you know he's someone who is very very open even even with the experience he has and everything when, when we hang, it's like, yeah, he's an elder without a doubt, and, and is also. But he's, he's as into up. you as as other. Exactly. You know? Yeah, he I did. He's just like, oh, really? It's like, oh, <laughs> what are you reading? Or send me that YouTube channel too. I want right, to listen right, to those right, meditations. Right, 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 right. And when we play, it's um, it's such a beautiful thing because it's like we're he's so willing and I'm so willing to just go as out as we possibly can, to to where it's like. We definitely throw each other off, and we love it. And it's the kind of thing. It's like, well, well, would that work as a performance or in front of people? And like recently, we did a little jam. It was such a sweet time, and um, it was like a, pretty much like a family atmosphere. Sure. And, and we we're doing this duo thing, and it became like comical, but awesome. Like we're rhythmically. Right. There was a sense of humor in it. Yeah. There was humor. Yeah. Yeah. And we were doing some crazy stuff rhythmically, and he can really throw some some stuff in there, and. Um, and it just became funny, but beautiful, and, and, and also spiritual. And it's, I'm really looking forward to seeing where that's going to go more. And he's having such a good time with it. And, um, and he's just an amazing person. And yeah, it's just like the way he lives, the car he drives. It's like, you know. Dude, he's, he's still, know. I mean, dude, he just, he, the one reason we connected was because of my, Adherence coming back to the accompanist. I, I was driven by on my show to, to interview Emil Richards and all these incredible yeah. percussion. And John loved those guys. He yeah. admired them so much for their musicianship. And at the end of the day, it was about creating spiritual music that changed people's lives. It had nothing to do with the money. And I'm very honored to be with you and also to know that. You have many chapters left to write in your life and career, and uh, and John is going to be a part of that. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Arjun, man, much love to you, brother. Thank you. Much love to you, too. Thank the Jake Feinberg Show. See you later. <laughs>